Okay. Exclusively here in Washington, D.C. is the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde. Welcome. Thank you so much, Sarah. Happy You're, to be here. It's great to see you. You're in town for the IMF World Bank meetings, as always. Interesting timing, because geopolitics are front and center again. These meetings mm. come after the Iranian attack on Israel. And I, and I do wonder if some of these events change the economic outlook for you at all or impact them. You know, geopolitical developments have been with us for a long time. And uh, certainly from our perspective in, in Europe, uh, the developments uh, started in a harsh and difficult way with the unacceptable invasion by Russia of Ukraine. That was a major geopolitical development that had significant economic impact, particularly on the energy front. But then, of course, we had more and more and some and not really often commented upon, uh, like Sudan, like Yemen. But obviously, since October 7th, it has been a succession of geopolitical developments which have a bearing on economic activity. I think it has a bearing on, number one, consumer confidence and confidence of investors. You know, where are we heading? What will be the developments? What impact will it have? And it also has an impact on uh, commodity prices. It, it's not been very significant um, in in the late in you know in the last few weeks, but obviously those geopolitical developments matter a lot. We factor them into our forecast, our uh, modeling as much as we can, and and we have to constantly monitor and see how it develops and what impact it has on on all these fronts that I have mentioned. On commodities, oil has been affected, and we watch oil, of course, mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with Iran. Brents are trading around 90. If it spikes higher, if there's an escalation, does that become a factor that changes your inflationary outlook for Europe and potentially your policy? We will, we will obviously, as you say, we are monitoring very closely. Uh, the most recent reaction in the last few days has been relatively moderate. It went up, it went down, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moderate uh, movement. We have gone through the period of significant hike of oil prices, and of course we will be informed by that episode. I think that, you know, since the, uh, particularly the latest development in, in Ukraine and the energy uh, crisis that Europe suffered in particular on oil and gas, uh, have changed the landscape as well in terms of sources of supply, in terms of uh, dependence, independence, level of inventories, relationship with other countries. And I think that the situation will be different from what it was then, but it, it does impact, and it does impact across the world, uh, not, just, uh, not just the euro area. It's, it's not just oil that's been rising. We've seen sure. prices from aluminum to cocoa mm -hmm. to copper. Mm -hmm which is happening at a time where overall eurozone inflation rates have been coming down. Yep. And I wonder how confident you feel about that level continuing to fall in the wake of some of these rises in commodities. You, you know, the, uh, I think on, on commodities, we cannot be brought, you know, it, it cannot be a, 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 a general assessment. We have to go sort of sector by sector by sector. Because when we look at food, for instance, whether it's processed or unprocessed, you have a first difference. And then cocoa has been a very, uh, has had a significant impact. But you also have to, you know, drill down, taking out cocoa, what is actually uh, the, um, the inflation on, on, on food. Now, you, you can't live on cocoa. Uh, and and uh, all the other elements have to uh, be really measured in that, uh, in that basket of, uh, of food elements. But all commodity prices uh, have an impact, and, and we have to be extremely attentive to those, those movements. Clearly, on uh, energy and on food, it has a direct and rapid impact. So the market is thinking that you're going to cut rates in June. You've signaled mm -hmm. June. Is that still the plan? <laughs> you know, we are, uh, we are observing a disinflationary process that is moving according to our expectations. And as I said in our latest um, press conference after the, uh, the monetary policy decision that we made to keep rates on hold, uh, we just need to build a bit more confidence in this disinflationary process. But if it moves according to our expectations, if we don't have you know, a, a major uh, shock in development, uh, we are heading towards a, you know, a moment where we have to 
moderate uh, the restrictive monetary policy that we have uh, applied uh, certainly since September when we decided to hold rate and to, uh, to, to keep that restrictive monetary policy. It will be time, as I said, subject to uh, the, the no development of additional shock, it will be time to moderate uh, the restrictive monetary policy in reasonably short order.